Hi, Grade 12. Welcome back to today's video. This is question number two from your September 2021 theory paper. Okay, so question number two dealt with uh, matching items. I hope you can see it there. Yeah, matching the items. So they gave us a column that had the explanation or the definition, and then we had to match that to the other column that has the term. So let's go through each one of these so that you understand it. Don't forget, um, in the description, I should have a link to these documents where you can go through that with me. Um, it should be the question paper and the memo as well. Right, so column A, 2.1 says, the trend where separate technologies and functions uh, that required different devices in the past are combined into a single device. So what they're saying is, um, in the past, we had a camera, we had a cell phone, we had a pager, we had a laptop, okay? Um, and some, you know, some people had some other devices, but they were all separate physical devices. Today, we have all of this combined into, you know, single devices. So if you think of your phone, your phone can email, it can take a picture, it can take video, it can play audio, it can do emails, it can do all of those things. So it's taken all those different technologies and functions and brought it into one. So what is that term? Convergence. Remember, convergence is the bringing together of different technologies into one device. Okay, 2.2 says to us, it includes utility programs or software pre-installed into your computer to help maintain the system. So generally, the, the group of programs that's installed um, with Windows by default are your accessories. Now, when I look at column B, I don't see accessories there. What I do see is e-administrative tools. So um, depending on your version of Windows, you might have administrative tools, but the option, honestly, should actually, or the answer should actually have been um, accessories. Right, 2.3, the total amount of data transferred from one point to another within a specific time span. Okay, so data transfer from, let's say, your home to your internet service provider over a period of time, that's known as your bandwidth. Okay, so when people talk about bandwidth, they're talking about the total amount of data that can be transferred from one point to another. 2.4, data identified on a website can be stored temporarily on a hard drive in a subdirectory of the browser. And at the next session, it is retrieved instead of opening the website via the internet. It means you've now opened your web browser, you've gone to a particular site. Let's say you've gone to Facebook, okay? You go to Facebook and through a process called caching, it downloads temporary files onto the PC and it means that even if I get disconnected off the internet, I can actually go back to that particular page. It'll still allow me to open that page because it's now opening it based on what's on the hard drive and not connecting to the internet. Okay, so that's, that's all it's really saying there. 2.5, a collection of independent networked computers that act together to, form, uh, to perform sorry, very large tasks. So that's what we call grid computing. So all grid computing is, like you see the PCs behind me, all they're saying is these computers are standalone computers that are connected to the internet. Okay, then we connect these PCs to one another. Why? Because we want the combined computing power um, for it to do something. So, for example, when they are processing um, information regarding the, the weather, generally they need a lot of computing power. 2.6, a horizontal line which is a little longer than a hyphen, used to express ranges and parenthetical expressions. You see what I'm talking about when it comes to language usage here, okay? But don't get confused. So um, this is known as the N dash, like not N as in the letter N dash, but E N dash dash. Okay, <laughs> hopefully I'll, I'll, have it, I'll have it down here, N dash, right? So this is a dash like you would have on, in, in, in Word, you know, anything like that, um, but it's a little bit longer than a dash. So please just, yeah, I think I'll just probably have a picture here um, of what the N dash is and where you'd find it on the keyboard as well. 2.7, the different parts of the files that become scattered across the disk 
causing the computer to become slower in retrieving the files in order to open or save them. So, um, sure, how do I say this very gently? I know some of you don't like cleaning your rooms. <laughs> I know some of you don't like cleaning your rooms. Sometimes when you are in a rush, and I know your life is very busy. So what happens is you quickly get things done. This is lying there. That's lying there. Your parents come and they moan at you. Pick this up. Why didn't you do this? Okay. Your room is a mess. Now, when we do the same thing to a computer, which we do, and how do I know? Have a look at your desktop. What does your desktop look like? Is it filled, like this entire screen, filled with icons? Yeah, then you probably need to do some disk defragmentation or decluttering, you know, clearing things up. So when we have fragmented pieces of um, files scattered through our PC, this happens when we move things, when we cut and paste, um, when we delete files, there's always little fragments um, scattered all over the PC and because those are there it can slow it down. So through the process of disk defragmentation uh, it goes through the PC, sees where all these bits and pieces are, says listen uh, there's nothing really associated to it, let's take this, let's clean this out. Let's look at the temp files, let's delete this permanently. Let's look at the recycle bin, let's empty those things. In other words, going into your room, cleaning it up, organizing it beautifully. What's going to happen? You're going to be able to find things easier, faster, right more efficiently <laughs> okay but that's what it does and so disk defragmentation does that for a computer so the option there um, is b by the way sorry i didn't give you that that answer 2.8 the ratio between the width and height of the screen okay so this is known as aspect ratio which uh is let me just see here it is i okay so that option is i now, aspect ratio, most of you will go and buy or your parents have bought a TV and the only thing they know is it's widescreen. But do they look at the aspect ratio? Have you as a cat learner told your parents about the aspect ratio? Probably not. You'll worry about it when it comes to buying a screen for your gaming. Right? When you need a gaming monitor, then you start to worry about those things. Um, so what that basically means when you watch a movie, and they tell you it's widescreen. Usually they'll put on, and I'll maybe have it here, 16 by 9. In other words, the ratio of the height to the width. So immediately, when you look at a screen or monitor being 16 by 9, or movie plane in 16 by 9, what that means is it's going to be wider than it is higher. right? Because 16 represents the width and the 9 represents the height. Now, when you have that uh, letterbox like the old TVs, um, they are generally in four by three. So again, four by three. Okay, so it's supposed to be like four inches by three inches, 16 inches by nine inches. So that's our aspect ratio. 2.9, so that's I. 2.9, the specification in which the speed of a printer is measured. Simple one, we know this, it is PPM, that is option D. Um, and pages per minute is what it's all about. So PPM stands for pages per minute. So when you look at a printer and you see it says 30 PPM, it means in a minute it can print 30 pages or at least up to 30 pages. Then the last one for question two and then the end of this video, uh, the setting on the camera for measuring the sensitivity to light. Now we know this has to do with the ISO rating. Uh, the larger that number is, the better uh, it's going to be for the quality of the camera. Why? Because as a camera is more sensitive to light, the picture that comes through is a lot clearer. So for example, here um, in my lab, I've got the lights above me off, but I've got a special light just over here. And what that does is it gives enough light, not just onto my face and these things, but for the camera to be able to take that in. And the better the light, the clearer the picture is going to be. So sensitivity to light, that is your ISO rate. And that is option O. All right. So grade 12s, I hope you are still with me. Um, I hope you've learned now a lot in terms of question one and two as, as we go through the series. Um, so that again, you can come out fully equipped, knowing exactly where you went wrong. Um, and this is going to empower you big time for the end of the year. I'm telling you, if you go through this, you really get to grips with the language usage, the way they want you to answer things, especially when we go into the other questions. 
you will be a okay when it comes to your final exam and you will smash it all right have a fantastic day i'll see you in our next video